Hello. Hey, hello. Good morning. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kapenguria. Uh, what's your name? My name is Tarus. Tarus, thank you so much. What do you think? Do you think uh, the government has uh, the integrity to fight corruption? Uh, they seem to be, but they are not, because even during their campaign rallies, I, I didn't think hard any of them. The president and his duty is talking about corruption. And until this present moment, I've never heard one of saying, if you take this or that, you will, you will, you will face the law and and the money to the government. Look, you are now saying the uh, government took 300 billion shillings. When the country is reeling in bottles in, in the roads, uh, accidents happen because of bottles, because I got a vehicle to travel, because I could travel about uh, slowly so that I don't, I don't hit another people coming from the other hand because of bottles. Some boys even stay in the road to, 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 to add some soil to that photos and there is no no what men who are doing the who can who can mend these photos. All right, Tarus, let me cut you short, but we're just in the first year. Do you think things will change as we move on to the second year, third year of the Jubilee administration? Uh, it might not, but uh, sometimes it might be. The goals I know the government is facing with a lot of problems. Many thanks indeed. Thank you, Tarus, for that. So, just like you're saying, uh, David McCarley, perhaps you could take over there. I mean, they, they very, know, okay. um, <laughs> people are not very optimistic about uh, what is likely to happen. Mm -hmm. or, you know, but as I said, the excuse or ought to be that we are only a couple of months into the new administration. So we can only judge the administration by its appointments and the profile mm -hmm. of its composition. But uh, the question, uh, Kimo, is this. Are we focusing too much on the leadership, yet the actual corruption does not happen mm -hmm. essentially among the elected? It happens among the government and public or state officials, servants. Well, I think there is a very close correlation between the politics and the techno technocrats uh, that are appointed in office. Um, as a matter of fact, one could easily argue that the the political the corrupt side of the political leadership finds its expression in the technocrats that are appointed and mm. and it is the technocrats who do the brief for the political leaders so right. it is it is not right to say that you can so you the can two cannot most, coexist unless they're of the same make mold that is right because remember uh, that uh, looking at the role of parliament for example one of its the constitutional roles of parliament is oversight but if you look at the reports that Parliament has, has developed over, over the years, and they have been quite a number, you can talk about many scandals, and all of them have a parliamentary report that has not been implemented. The recommendations have not been implemented. But even uh, fundamentally important is the fact that uh, sometimes the debate, you can see very clearly that it's colored in political overtones, so that if it is uh, a, a, a minister who is accused of corruption and he is aligned to a particular uh, political side, you will see the political side rallying behind him in parliament. Yes. Uh, in fact, even getting some provisions, uh, recommendations deleted from the report on the floor of parliament so that at the end of the day, it is not so much uh, what is right or what is uh, 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 good to do for purposes of protecting pub the public interest, but it is more about what numbers can you marshal right. uh, to, to... Which raises the integrity questions. I mean, you are still, you know, confirming that the integrity of the top, yes. of the leadership elected, determines really the, you know, the integrity of the whole system down the line. Uh, 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 let's, let's look at the, the Integrity Act. Obviously, I mean, Mwakazi outlined some of the shortcomings or uh, pitfalls of that act. What amendments specifically are required to make it, uh, to reinforce it? I would say three important amendments in my view. Um, one is that we need to provide, fight for procedures and mechanisms for the enforcement of that act. We need to get the ESCC, the Ethics and Corruption Commission, to have the teeth to supervise the implementation of that, that act and chapter 6, the way the constitution envisages. And remember that the mandate of the commission is twofold. There is the ethics mandate and there is the anti-corruption mandate. 
and ethics is not necessarily about criminal criminal law it is the threshold is uh, is in my view much higher and requires uh, a lot more work in terms of building the ethical fabric of the society it's the right. preventive side of right. of the fight against corruption so i would say that is the first amendment the second one is uh, the issue of wealth declarations they are lost uh, uh, the issue what of wealth declaration yes. is, is is lost the law is very clear but you have not seen any institutions whether it's parliament whether it's the um, independent electoral and boundaries commission whether it's the ethics and anti-corruption commission you have not seen anybody come to raise the issue of wealth declarations even in the vetting of public officers like we right. had the other day so that is another issue that we need to revisit um, and then third i would say that we need um, punishment there are really no sanctions in this act the sanctions that are there are fairly few and they only address those uh, um, uh, uh, violations that amount to a criminal offense. Right. For violations that can be addressed administratively, the ethical uh, lapses right. that can be addressed uh, administratively, there is actually no guidance on how that is going to be dealt yeah, with. Right. Yeah. So you either prosecute or you don't do anything yeah. about it. That is the other okay. amendment that needs to be done. Yeah, just before we conclude, there is the matter of uh, the provision that public servants should not be involved in any other gainful employment. Is that the reason why corruption festers or grows in the public sector? And should that be changed or should it be retained? There's a big correlation. Um, I think the business uh, elites and the political elites in this country are very much intertwined. So that the political elite are also, in, in, in many cases, the, the economic elite. So you will find that if it is in procurements, that uh, people are making decisions in situations, in my view, that constitute conflict of interest and enrich themselves right. either directly or through others, through proxy companies that have been set up for that purpose. Well, that's not, that's not directly uh, 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 gainful employment. Because, I mean, if uh, there's uh, an officer who works in the immigration department, yes. that office is barred from gainful employment. What exactly does gainful employment mean in a nutshell, just like this? Before well, I, I think it simply means um, employment, either full-time or, uh, or, 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 or part-time, that could lead you into a conflict of interest situation. Mm. I think that's what the Constitution envisaged. It's not just gainful employment in a blanket sense. It's gainful employment that would bring you into conflict, uh, into a conflict of interest situation vis-a-vis uh, -vis the office. That so that needs to be left intact? That needs to be defined. It has right. been, uh, there was an attempt to define it, but it was not properly done in our view. It needs to be revisited so that there is proper guidance for our public, uh, the, for our state officers on, on what is allowed and what is not allowed in law. All right. Okay. Thank you. Over to you, Makazi. Many thanks indeed, uh, David Makali and uh, uh, Kimel. Thank you so much. We totally appreciate it. Of course, uh, the question of whether the government has the uh, integrity to fight corruption all the responses were negative now perhaps a parting shot here from uh, from facebook here a post we're tired of talk and more talk on leadership and integrity as enshrined in the beautiful document called constitution which so far is just a document and not integrated into our day-to-day -day life perhaps we need to make the document more of a reality than just a paper than just talk Many thanks indeed for your comments, we totally appreciate And of course we're not stopping here. We're still moving on with the fight against corruption. We need to slay this dragon called corruption. Of course, Transparency International is in the forefront. You have perhaps information, comments, questions, concerns and ideas in terms of dealing with corruption. You don't need to go further, you just need to go to Facebook, ti-kenya, that's Facebook, uh, ti-kenya, uh, that's facebook.com forward slash transparency Kenya. On Twitter, that is at ti-kenya. So those are the different places you can go to in terms of, you know, just getting more information in relation to uh, uh, corruption. And of course, you can also uh, call... 0800-720-721 that's 0800-720-721 and you can also SMS to this number 22129 that's 22129 we need to be part of this battle 
We need to slay the dragon of corruption. We'll do this again next week on Friday on the Power Breakfast Show. Thank you so much indeed for being part of the team today. Do have a blessed, beautiful and corruption-free weekend. All the best.